Hello, hello, hello. It's Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago as usual. I hope everyone is having a good weekend. I wasn't going to do one today. I know I always say that, but it's Natalie's fault. Natalie sent me a clip. I saw 30 seconds of it. That's it. I haven't seen most of it. But for those 30 seconds, I thought, I I, I got to share. We, <laughs> we've got a Karen whining about a cat. What, what, what What's not to like about this thing? All right, let's get her started, shall we? Oh, also, I'm proud to report we have the. Ma'am, you didn't say the cat jumped on his wiener, did you? Is there a way you could please let me out today? Because I'm supposed to be going for a job interview. I get a job. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to get a job. Sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. This is in the District Court of Greenwood County, Kansas. Case is entitled Tracy Burke versus Kimberly Benson, case number 23, CV5. Plaintiff Tracy Burke appears in person pro se. Defendant Kimberly Benson also appears in person pro se. All parties are appearing by Zoom. We are set today for a trial on an appeal from Judge Webster's um, decision in this case <laughs> in Kansas, an appeal from a small claims decision is per de novo, which means this, oh, this is good already. It, um, as if it's hearing it for the first time, the, it's not based on the prior record. Okay. So the Thank you, manner Tia. in which we'll proceed is probably very similar to the manner in which you proceeded when the case was heard in front of Judge Webster, Miss Burke, as the plaintiff. You will put on your case first. Um, if you if you call um, witnesses um, to testify, including yourself, oh, no. Ms. Benson will be able to cross-examine you or ask you questions based on your testimony or the witness's testimony and vice versa when Ms. Benson puts on her case. Um, I do note that you both- Oh, we got us a de novo pro se appeal off, off from a Judge Webster decision. <laughs> I, I like the procedural posture already. Both have submitted um, some exhibits. When you wish to reference an exhibit, you'll need to, they're not marked, and I, I understand you both, or well, maybe they are. We sure are. I'll, since you are both representing yourself, I'll give you a little bit of, of leeway on, on court procedure, but we still operate as if you did have attorneys. So, um, Ms. Burke, do you <laughs> oh, have any no. questions about how oh, you no. proceed? No, sir. Uh, Ms. Benson, do you? No. All right, and I will urge you both during if somebody else is testimony uh, is testifying or presenting evidence try not to interrupt if you disagree with what somebody's saying don't don't say anything you'll each have an opportunity to um, tell me whatever um, you feel um, is necessary for your respective cases so judge crumb knows he's in for it he just knows it <laughs> he is not looking forward to this hearing and um, i typically will give you party an opportunity to make an opening <laughs> statement if they wish. An opening statement is just a uh, preview or a brief summary of, of what what you hope to um, show the court regarding your position on the case. Mr. John, Burke, do you wish to make any sort of opening statement? good way to get kicked statement? off the channel here. Uh, yes, sir. I would. Uh, what about this little kitten for our daughter? Um, as the cat grew older, it did not meet uh, Egyptian mild standards for breeder quality. That's when we reached out from to Miss Benson to let her know that we had issues with the kitten. Uh, she had asked us to oh, no. get a oh, DNA no. test, which we had done. Oh no! And uh, it came back with the Bengal the, cat background. The accents a bonus. Um, we have raised Egyptian moths for probably fourteen years. We've never had a kitten that had yellow eyes. This kitten does have. <laughs> that totally disqualifies the kitten for show um that's just in the cfa standards that a cat with yellow eyes will be disqualified we paid two thousand dollars for a breeder show quality cat and that is not what we got all right thank you miss burke and miss benson do you wish to make an opening statement well okay yes then. i would thank you actually uh cfa breeder standard does claim 
that a kitten has up to 18 months of age to reach green eye color. She decided to come to me when the kitten was seven months old and said that it was not breeder quality in her opinion. Now I've been showing Egyptian mouths for 22 years. Oh, good so Lord. I do know a little bit about how the show system works. I actually even showed a half litter mate. And so you're not the only cat, cat lady, Tracy. <laughs> Oh, the cat shows. I don't know. I, I There's nothing I can say that won't get me in trouble. And first cousin to the cat <laughs> she purchased. That cat did champion, and it looked the same as far as eye color, uh, general type, and the markings on the forehead. Um, so that's why I took it and showed it. It championed under all eight judges. She got her winner's ribbon. She came home a champion in one show. So I believe that statement to be completely incorrect. I brought four kitties for her to decide from, the one that she had picked online from the photos, plus its litter mates, plus an older male kitten that I also had available when she met me at my vet's office in Howard, Kansas. She picked out the kitty of her choosing that met the criteria she wanted, had me do additional testing on the cat for her, which I did at my cost, and then she took the kitty home. So, and as to the claim that it is a Bengal cross, again, I have been raising Egyptian mouths for 22 years and showing them. There is no Bengal in my background, to my knowledge. However, Egyptian mouths were used to create the Bengal breed. So there is Egyptian mouth in the Bengal bloodlines. <laughs> it's just different strains. Judge and Wisdom like, Panel does state now. clearly shoot in their terms now. and conditions <laughs> that they are not to be used in a court hearing. That's why I sent that as part of my evidence. It says it's more for a general idea of what might be in your cat. And I did not ask her to get Wisdom panel done she did that on her own <laughs> all right thank you miss Jensen. occasionally i might interrupt you all if i have a question or need a clarification on I, when you say things like wisdom panel or something similar i i don't know what that is so sometimes i might interrupt and, and ask those questions i'm not attempting because i'm to normal read, but just trying to make sure i understand all okay. of what you do, so all right, Ms. Burke, I'll allow you to put on your evidence now. Do you do you have witnesses that are going to testify? Or are, you, are you going to testify they, on your own behalf? They should have been subpoenaed uh, per the last Supreened? court. <laughs> and I'm not sure who was supposed to do that. I didn't because I don't have the quality to do that. But I will tell you what I have <laughs> in my possession. Well, let, me stop, let me stop you there. You, you think you subpoenaed witnesses? No, she subpoenaed them, Judge. <laughs> She's like, I don't know who's supposed to. Do uh, whoever wants the witness is supposed to subpoena the witness. That would be you, because you're the one trying to make a case. What was that that we were supposed to do for the whole thing? Who was supposed to subpoena them? Where are we? We go on without them. We're going without them. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, so you have to testify on your own behalf because <laughs> she didn't yeah. subpoena them. Okay, I'm going to have you raise your right hand and swear you in. You swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. So help me God. All right. If you could uh, just start by stating your um, full name for the record, please. Tracy D. Burke. All right. Go ahead and provide your testimony. Okay. When we bought the little kitten. Um, uh, it was a $2,000 breeder cat show quality. Um, thank you. And we paid for that. And we did pick the kitten up in Kansas. Egyptian mall disqualifies as a show quality cat per our exhibit four. If uh, blue eyes, lack of green eyes and color in cats over the age of one year, six months is disqualified from show. We paid $2,000 for breed quality, show quality, and this cat has yellow eyes. All right, okay. let me stop you there, Ms. Burke. You were just referencing Exhibit 4, is that correct? Correct. Uh, those cats can be tough on the wieners. And where, where is it's a page that seems to describe Egyptian now and it has a point score. What, what is it. this document? It's the Cat Fanciers Association. It's where the cat is registered. Such an uh, AKC registered dog, only this is a cat. So it's called a cat fancy what? 
association. <laughs> Cat fancy. Watching Judge Crumb. All right, Miss Benson, have you seen? <laughs> Spit this out the phrase it? "cat fancy" is what yes, is worth the whole thing already. Yes, it's system for Cat Fancy's Association. <laughs> it does not say it's a disqualifying trait. It just means it gets less points. <laughs> it clearly states what are disqualifying traits: is a lack of spots, blue eyes, lack of green eye in color in cats over the age of one year six months, mottled or pink, and that is a disqualifying per CFA. All right, do you wish to admit this exhibit? It's exhibit four, yes, sir. All right, any objection to the admission of this exhibit, Ms. Benson? No. All right, exhibit, plaintiff's exhibit four will be admitted. You may proceed further, Ms. Burke. Okay, exhibit five is a cat color eye. It is clearly yellow, not green. Is this the cat in question that you purchased? Yes, sir. And when was this photograph taken? April of this year. I might know a thing or two. April 2023. <laughs> Do you wish to admit this exhibit? Yes. Any objection, Ms. Benson? I would like to see it. I was unable to pull it up and see it. Were you provided a copy of these exhibits? Uh, yes, I did not see one that showed the cat's eye color clearly. So. Do you have know. those in front of you, the exhibits? That I'm you trying see? to pull that up right now. Three days ago. I'm assuming the cat in question is named Zeke. Yes, sir. Oh, Zeke. Sorry, your eyes are too yellow, buddy. You're a disappointment of a cat. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do so this will flow better is I'll just allow you to testify, Ms. Burke, and then, then we can go back and address the admission of the exhibits later. So we're, it'll just let your testimony flow a little bit smoother. So, all right, go ahead. Um, the marking on the cat is incorrect. He does not have uh, the mall M on his forehead. He also does not clarify the color of the coat of a, uh, an Egyptian mall as per exhibit five. Uh, that's exhibit five, page two. I'm apologizing. And when was that photograph taken? About three months ago, I would say. He's still a small cat. But the reason why that we chose the wisdom panel was because our vet has him classified as a gray tabby cat. And when we asked him about the having the DNA done, he uh, recommended the wisdom panel. So whether ever it's um, allowable in court or not, that's what our vet asked us to do. And it what wasn't it? done on a uh, whimsical whatever, just to find out what the cat was. What is because the wisdom panel? It is a DNA testing that can give you some idea of what your cat is. And me and Miss Benson had talked back and forth because we had had questions, and she had recommended for me to have the DNA testing done. Oh, these and when the kitten came lied. back with part Bengal cat is when she started, she didn't want to hear anything about that. I had gotten in touch with CFA's um, ombudsman, who said that if he, she accused me of having a Bengal cat in my house, which I do not. Uh, and he said, even if I had have had a Bengal cat in my house, it would not have changed the DNA on this cat. Now, I'm not going to say that Miss Benson did or did not know the background of the cats that she's breeding, but she passed this kitten off as a show quality Egyptian mall in which in turn she talked to her lawyer and she could find a buyer to buy it for three 350 bucks when we paid three thousand and drove to kansas to pick the kitten up and you live in georgia i live in alabama alabama okay all right you can proceed further in this for a cat okay um the back of the cat uh 
from the head to his, the back of his shoulders is not in uh, Egyptian mall um, pedigree. It's one way to go for a little cat. Uh, as Miss Benson said, she had raised you know what I'm saying. Uh, Egyptian malls <laughs> for 20 years or so. So have I. And evidently, I got a better cat out of New Hampshire than I did out of Kansas because he looks nothing like this kitten. And this is exhibit five, page three. Also, uh, Kansas is substandard in terms of cats. Do you hear me, Judge? Exhibit five, page four. <laughs> he should have a button vest, not all of these button strap looking stuff that is incorrect for this cat breed. We did have the wisdom panel done after we. What I would pay for this judge's internal dialogue. Yes, he does have a dry sense of humor. He is. <laughs> but he also has a sense to shut his mouth. Consulted with our own veterinarian. Um, and that's exhibit six, page one, that shows that this cat is not a, a third breed cat. It's got another cat mixed in with it. Oh, that would be beautiful. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Bring us some like cat breeder in and here. And this was a blind test check. <laughs> a blind um, test what? The Shit. wisdom panel showed a blind test pack, uh, blind test, uh, a cheek swab. Typically, that's done in dogs, cats, humans to dogs. find out what their uh, genealogy is or who belongs to who. Uh, this might be trivial, but this is something that me and Miss Benson had agreed to do. After I had some questions back when Zeke's eyes didn't color come out to be green. Uh, that was my first heads up, was the cat has yellow eyes. And that totally disqualified him from a show ring. And I certainly would not want to breed that cat with a show quality female and it have disqualifying features, which would cut the cat out of show. On exhibit six, page two, you will see how there's two different cats that were shown up in this um, DNA test. And it shows an Egyptian mole and a Bengal cat. Yeah. Also on page, uh, you know the DNA six, test showed, page three, there's been a long line oh, yes. of this Bengal cat going all the way up <laughs> to our Zeke's parentage. I talked to oh, yeah. our, when I was accused of having a Bengal cat in my home, and I talked to the ombudsman of CFA who <laughs> registered this kitten as to be a thoroughbred cat. He told well, me that there was no way in for this you. lineage <laughs> with that cat ever had a Bengal in our home. That's what that background of that cat was. Now, I do have the parent lineature from the certified pedigree, but I also on um, oh. plaintiff exhibit eight, it shows a <laughs> email uh, captured from Edward L. Raymond Jr. of the CFA Ombudsman, who texted me back and said, your cat was registered based on the fact that its parents were CFA registered. Please understand that they not every offspring from a pedigree of two CFA registered cats ends up being show quality. He apologizes that I did not receive the cat that I wanted or bargained for, but for CFA was not a party to that transaction. And CFA is the Cat Fancy Association? Yes, sir. That's who uh, registers the cats for to make sure that their pedigree cats to travel along with their genetic line where you can go to show or you can breed the cats and it'd be a little bit better quality than your typical mutt cat, which nobody ever knows what's in those cats. Because most people don't care that we didn't uh, go to a shelter and get a baby 30, 50 buck cat to help this uh, humane society out. I actually have a cat that I plucked out of tractor supplies box at the cat register. She was free to me. Uh, that was 30 miles away. I didn't drive all the way to Kansas to go pick up a kitten that was supposed to be registered, only to find out that it did not meet the breed quality of what I paid for. Um, she's just a little old mutt cat. And a little mutt cat's called what people might say as 
a mixed breed dog, a mixed breed cat. You don't know who their parents are. The, our little red cat come out of a storm drainage. We also have had this cat neutered because he is not show quality. He does not fit the description of what a uh, thoroughbred mall should be looking like. We had this cat neutered. That's the end of the line for that cat. And that's on exhibit nine. Miss Burke, when, when was the cat purchased? I applaud the judge for staying conscious for this. Okay. August the 6th, 2021, a deposit was sent. And we picked the kitten up on October the 8th at uh, Miss Benson's vet in Hamilton, or it might have been off skirt of that little area in Hamilton, Kansas. All right, go ahead. Okay, we attempted to uh, settle this transaction, Exhibit 11, to offer her uh, to pay us back $2,800, which would cost for the cat and our uh, transportation cost to come pick the kitten up. Usually when you go out of state to buy a kitten, because there's not one available in your area, um, our first mall come out of New Hampshire. This one actually comes out of Kansas. Um, we offered her $28 settlement to make this issue correct, and that was denied. Okay. Ms. Burt, who is sitting, who's assisting you? My husband is sitting next to me. Okay. Since he drove us to Kansas, so I figure he has a right to be here. Okay. You can He can certainly be there, but he can't assist you. In presenting your case, if you wish to call him as a witness, you can certainly do that. Then go ahead. Uh, I will agree with that. <laughs> you I don't really have a choice. Shift. I apologize. <laughs> I've had three hours sleep today. I worked 12 hours shifts in a nursing home. But today is the day of court. So we was a tired on. cat, Karen. Poor judge. You can proceed with your testimony, Ms. Burke. Okay, we went ahead and did a um, small claim court, which we won. Um, and I guess I'm not sure why. I guess Ms. Benson had that obligation to uh, appeal that decision, and she has that right to. But um, when we're having to pay court costs for her to appeal a case, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry. Us Alabama folks don't work like Kansas people, evidently. Uh, and I guess that's probably, we're having to be charged an additional $300 uh, for Ms. Benson to appeal this case. Woo! She, she just called them all dirty uh, Kansas people <laughs> in front of a Kansas judge. Well played, Kat Karen, well played. That we've already won. Um, but well, whatever what? your decision is, and we have up to any. Who assessed uh, you three hundred dollars, Miss Burke? Sir, where you were sent a bill for three hundred dollars for appeal fees? Uh, that was on what I was sent from district court, sir. Yes, sir, I did. One hundred ninety-five dollars. When was that assessed to you? When it got sent to your district court. It's on the docket. She might have an appearance fee. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know who won it. I don't know who won in front of Webster still. Right, you can proceed further. <laughs> okay. From what I, we have been through and trying to settle this with Ms. Benson, and she don't think that she owes us anything back in this cat is what it's worth. Uh, we disagree. Me and my husband both have lost work. And neither one of us have a cheap income. We don't sit on our butt. I work for a nursing home, and I'm a nurse. Oh, do I feel for the husband right now? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? My husband works for the federal government. It's not that $3,000 is nothing to us to lose, but it is the fact of the matter 
that somebody in Kansas can fraudulently do something that should not be done. When I called CFA, they agreed. <laughs> they did not think that the kitten was registered thoroughbredly uh, breeder court. Kansas is just taking it on the chin today. They've got substandard cats. It's rife with fraud. <laughs> Her cat's eyes are yellow. She is not having it. Quality. And I have that uh, email from Mr. Benson. <laughs> I also. have attempted numerous times to let Ms. Benson know that she had a problem with her cat's heritage. And all I got was that I was trying to slander her and I did not. I called CFA and Mr. Uh, Raymond told me that that cat was a mixed breed cat due to its lineage. And I had that uh, DNA testing done through me and my Ms. Benson's agreement to let's see what the cat come out from. And that's when she become very uh, hostile, so to say, to me and some emails saying that she did not um, agree with that. Was it done by blood? Was it done by saliva? And if I'm not wrong, whether it be dog, cat, or human, cheeks are usually swabbed for DNA. Now, this wasn't meant as a trivial, let's see what our cat's made up of. But that's what it came out to be, was a mixed breed cat. She agreed during small claims court that all of her cats may not develop into show quality. Well, the show quality price on her cats goes back to plaintiff exhibit one, where a silver pet mall is 1200 bucks. That's usually where you get one altered and it cannot breed. When you go to breeder show quality at $2,000 a piece, then that is a big, tremendous difference. But then I also got an email from Ms. Benson saying that she had talked with her attorney and that she could sell the cat between three and $350. That's a far cry from 2000 that we paid for the cat, plus to come pick it up. That is plaintiff exhibit 10. Germany in the house. That's awesome. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, you can proceed further, Miss Burke. Okay. I contacted um, Kansas. Um, I, I mean, I have a real hard time taking her seriously just because the, the whole thing is funny to me. It is. But the, the, as, as a matter of law, the, you know, the question is sort of, did she misrepresent what she was selling her? I I, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. I, I don't know if we get a resolution. I don't know anything. Attorney General, uh, he did advise me to take it up with the Federal Trade Commission. I have not done that yet. And I don't know what difference it would make. Um, I did call CFA because I had some issues with the markings on the cat. That by no means was any slander to anybody. I was trying to get to the bottom of what this cat is. And were we just fraudulently sold a cat? So I also had the state of Kansas uh, small animal uh, division to call me back. And they actually told me that Ms. Benson did not have a business license in the state of Kansas and that she was hard to find. And I probably agree with that because it wasn't until I told the sheriff's department, I knew where she was. And if they needed me to drive back to Kansas to help her locate, to get to the bottom of this situation, I would be happy to. And they found Ms. Benson. I did not have to make that trip. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. That's where we stand with this cat. It is a mixed breed cat. Oh, good Lord. He is at least two years old now, and he still has yellow eyes. 
Uh, so if I decided to take him to show, and there's show quality, and there's also called a premiere quality, which a cat has been altered, but can be shown in a cat show. Uh, his yellow eyes would disqualify him in either show ring. And I'm not even going there to embarrass myself. Ooh. Thank and you, I guess that's all I have to say. All right, Miss Benson, do you have questions of Miss Burke based on her testimony? What was this about embarrassing yourself? Does she have some self awareness? And keep in mind, you'll have your opportunity to testify on your own behalf. But if you have cross examination questions, you may ask those of Miss Burke at this time. Thank you. Miss Burke, I would like you to read your Exhibit 10 aloud in its entirety. Now, just a small excerpt that you keep picking out of it. Uh, you said again. You're at, you're you're at exhibit 10. Uh -huh. Okay, if I'm going to be able to talk, don't talk over me, please. I right, I'm going to, right, let's, <laughs> both of you, this needs to be done orderly and respectfully. So I'll advise oh, each of you, please don't talk over one another as we, we are taking the record. Within a cat fight. So you may proceed. Um, answering the question, Ms. Burke. On this email text, yeah. I guess it was an email because um, I had I have both and I was in contact with her frequently as the kitten age. On October the 13th, 2022, Ms. Benson <sighs> contacted me again and said, again, your cat is not mixed breed. I did go to an attorney after our last talk he did tell me the only thing you can do since you already have slandered me everywhere you can is for me to sue you. And there is no way that you will win. Please feel free to do so. He also asked me what I can resell the adult cat for. I told him that as a neutered adult, I have only been able to get about 300 to 350 adoption fees. After a year old, if I find a buyer, he informed me that if I were so inclined, I could offer me, Miss Burke, three hundred and fifty dollars. Or I did bring up that I would be willing to allow to trade him for another young adult male. I have that I thought would be more to your liking. He informed me that he would not feel that this is necessary. But if I do, you would have to sign a contract that he would draw up for me and that you would agree to rescind all your defamation statements you have made publicly and agree that this was the final contract we would have. If you would like to see this boy under those terms, I will get you some photos. If not, I will await the contract the contact from your lawsuit which will be here in kansas as a sale was here in kansas where it will have jurisdiction okay well i tell you what why don't you go back all right miss burke it's miss benson's uh, time to ask you questions at this time so do you have additional cross-examination questions miss benson since I have shown many Egyptian mouths with yellowy green eyes, which is what his look like. My question is, where do you find it a disqualifying trait? Because I've been showing for the last 22 years and I've yeah. never had a judge disqualify one for yellowy green eyes once ever. So where is it stated that that is a disqualifying trait? Okay, if you will see on plaintiff exhibit four, uh, 2022, the Can't Cat Fanciers Association, uh, when you look at that entire sheet that you can print out, oh, I do. It says disqualify, <laughs> lack of spot. It's the worst eyes, channel ever. It really is. Green in eye color in <laughs> cats over the age of one year six months. Modeled or pink paw pads, pinked or abnormal tail, incorrect number of toes, white locket or button distinctive from other acceptable <laughs> white color areas in color sections of standard. I mean, that's it so right yes, there. So, yes, ma'am, this comes from CFA. <laughs> that's the assumption of the risk in argument. In 2022 I like <laughs> of their cat breed standard for the Egyptian mall. You know what you're getting going to Kansas for a cat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Additional questions, Ms. Benson? No, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, Ms. Burke, do you have additional witnesses or evidence you'd like to present? No, sir. All right, I need to, I want to address these exhibits. Um, you've referenced a number of exhibits here, but there's also some that you didn't. Is it your wish that the court agreed all right. of the exhibits that you submitted? Correct. Do I need to go over each and every one of them for you? Oh, please don't. Well, I, we'll find that out in a minute. Ms. Benson, do you have any objection to the court admitting these exhibits? No. All right. There's no objection. So, Ms. Burke, I'll admit all of the exhibits that you presented, which appear to be um, 15 numbered exhibits, some of those with uh, multiple pages. So those are those are admitted. Thank you. All right, Miss Benson, it is now your turn to put on your case. Do you intend to testify on your own behalf or do you have other witnesses to call? No, I'm testifying on my own behalf. All right, give me just a second. All right, if you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. All right, go ahead and state your full name for the record. Kimberly Renee Benson. All right, you may proceed with your testimony. Okay, um, I submitted evidence that I showed a sister out of the same male, and the mother was a first cousin um, that looked exactly like the features that she did not like in the male. So I took her to a show in Garland, Texas, and showed her under eight judges, all eight of which gave her her winner's ribbons. She came out of that show a champion. Um, right, Ms. Benson, let me let me stop you there. Okay. This cat you're referring to is a sister of Zeke? Yes. <laughs> Judge is like, I can't believe I'm asking this, but okay, I will. <laughs> from the same litter? It is from a different litter, and the mothers are first cousins, but the same father. <laughs> she was born about a year ago. I have her registration papers as one of the exhibits. Did you say same father, different mother? Same father. The mothers were uh, sisters. That so was the stud. On mom's side. Okay, go ahead. But the reason I showed that one was because it had the same qualities of Zeke. You know, the same lighter pattern, the same lack of a very distinctive M that she kept yelling was a disqualifying trait. Um, and the same, you know, yellowy green eye color. Same exact features as Zeke. So I took her to a show down in Garland, Texas, um, which is listed. She has her championship certificate also in evidence from that show. She's a champion, damn it. Uh, that I applied as well, also in CFA. And we had no trouble championing her. Uh, that's why I had asked if she had ever shown Z at one point when we were conversing back and forth. And she had not. I did not at any time tell her to go get the DNA done, but I didn't have a problem with it because you know, uh, it's the top notch pussy defense. It's he's been three or four generations into my bloodlines of Egyptian <laughs> mouse that I've been raising for the last 22 years. Many of my mouse have shown to grand championship. One of my mouse was best Egyptian mouse in Europe. So, you know, he's got good bloodlines behind him. If he didn't turn out perfect show quality, well, that's why I put breeder show because he might make a great breeder. Some of my best breeders are not my best show cats. And some of my best show cats aren't my best breeders. It doesn't always go hand in hand. But he was sold as breeder show quality, which is exactly what he was presented, which is exactly what he was. She could easily have championed him if she wanted to or gone further if she wanted to. But she chose to never show him and just decided on her own that he was not breeder show quality. What does it mean when you say could have championed him? If she had taken him to a show and eight judges deemed him fit and worthy, they would have given him his blue winner's ribbons. When you get those blue winner's ribbons from six different judges, your cat becomes a champion and then all you have to do is apply for the certificate but it's automatically goes towards the registration papers any cat that becomes a champion in cfa then has the ch in front of the name from then on once you pay the ten dollar fee and you know get the little championship certificate if you want you can have the paperwork redone to show that championship but any kittens out of it would automatically have the ch in front of his name from then on once he becomes a champion or she So I felt like I sold her exactly what we agreed on. I did try to make her happy and I said, okay, you know, I can 
send you another cat that is more what you're thinking a championship cat should look like or a grand championship cat should look like. I do have a darker spotted male who's much more distinctive, much more has the look that you would like, you know, that you think of as a male. There are a lot of different looks in the silver Egyptian males. They go from a very light silver to a very dark spotted black, pinky black spotted silver and everything in between. CFA doesn't say it has to be this shading or that shading. They just want to be able to see the pattern, which he has. Um, like I said, I've been showing them off and on for the last 22 years whenever I've got enough money to go because it's 350 to $500 to spend on the show weekend to show cats. That's just the reality. So I don't go all the time, but off and on I go whenever I can afford to. And my cats have done very well. We placed in the top 10 all breed finals repeatedly. Um, and to be in a top 10 all breed final, that's they take all the breeds and they bring back their favorite 10 cats. I've taken a best cat and show twice. So <clears throat> I do know my breed. I've been doing it it's predominantly Egyptian mouse for 22 years. That's why I was so offended that she was calling and talking to everybody that she could think of to try to discredit me. I have many people that come back. I have people that have come back this year from 17 years ago wanting a new mouse because theirs had gotten old or was about to die or had died from old age. I have people that come back for three, four, five, and six cats for me. I try to make my people happy but I don't feel like I should give them all their money back and then some every time somebody decides they're not happy. I've had people come back and a year later and say, well, they come, they, they come back for that quality pussy. My cat's not a kitten anymore. I want you to give me my money back so I can go buy a new kitten. <laughs> That's the world we live in. Everybody wants what they want and they want it right now. I mean, they don't necessarily think about anything except what they want. That's all so you I need to try know. to make it right. <laughs> and when I said that I could get three to 350, that's any adult spayed or neutered. People don't want adults. They want kittens. Once you spay or neuter it, you don't have an opportunity to sell it as a breeder to someone else. All you can get is an adoption fee because it's now an adult and everybody wants a kid. So that's where I was coming from when I said three to 350 is what I can get for a neutered adult, period. That I just can't get any more than that because nobody wants adults that they can't use the breeding program. They want kittens. So I, that was where I, I was trying to hold from. it back. I tried I to make it right in the only David. ways I know how, but I'm not going to be just giving people money because they decide it's grown and I'm no longer interested and I want my money back. That's like wearing a pair of jeans for a year to me and then take them to the store and say, oh, you should give me all my money back and then some because they no longer fit. You know, it, it's just not reasonable. So that's where I was coming from. My case is, is based on, I sold her exactly what I said I did. She picked out the kitty of her choice. She didn't want an older kitten. She wanted the as young as possible. And I understand that people want as young as possible because that's what they want to bond with. I don't let them leave under 12 weeks of age. So I met her at my vets when the kitten was 12 weeks of age. I brought the one that was a couple months older with me in case she liked him better, but she'd made up her mind. She wanted that younger one and that's fine. I let her see all that I had available. She took the one she wanted. And then I didn't hear anything bad from her until seven months later when she decided she was no longer happy with the kitten. How many different cats did you take for her to look at? Four. <laughs> that's what I had in kittens available at that time. I have been a long time supporter. All right, you make it soon. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much that is my case. Um, you know, I, I basically, I sent the photos of the cat to show how much she looked like Zeke that I showed and with her winner's ribbons and on each judge's table with each judge, I sent her championship certificate and I sent the copy of her registration papers with her new champion designation in front of her name. And you can see that they're out of the same father. When you look at Zeke's registration papers and hers, like I said, the mothers were cousins. So her were. The mothers were sisters, which made them cousin on one side and half sister on dad's side. I have never raised. Are you, them. Are you referring to the exhibits that you submitted to the yes. court? Yes. Well, let's. let's see. Okay. Do you have additional testimony? Not at this time. All right, Miss Burt. Do you have any questions of, of Miss Benson based on her testimony? Uh, yes, nice cats don't. Oh, here we go. Have anything to here do with Zeke's qualifications? And if I can get you to go back to Exhibit One, about oh, halfway from that, it says the overall balance in our kittens is coming together nicely, and I raised for sweet-tempered, <laughs> outgoing, affectionate, if not somewhat clingy. Well, let me tell you what Zeke is. All right, Miss Burke, do you? This is an opportunity for you to ask questions. I'll give you one last opportunity to make a further statement. 
Do you have a question to ask Ms. Benson? No, I didn't. I had a comment to make about my exhibit one. Okay. Well, this okay. is cross-examination. So okay. I don't have anything to cross-examine. Okay. All right. Let me address the... I love that. <laughs> She's so obnoxious about it. Do you have a question? No, I didn't. I was going to make a statement. Yeah, yeah. Now's not the time for that. Exhibits then, Ms. Benson. <laughs> You've submitted... They're not marked, but there's one, two, three, four pages of photographs. Yes. And do these photographs all depict the sister cat you referred to in your testimony? Yes. Ah, uh, the Burke, sister you have cat. Any objection to the court admitting these photographs? No, sister cats. I didn't get such photographs. I don't know what cat she's inquiring about. That may or may not be linkage to the cat that we got from her. Right. You don't. Well, you have not received these exhibits. No, sir. There is Andrew, no foundation. The ability to. I'm confident of that. Email those to Miss Burke. They were emailed to her on five sixteen. No, ma'am. I never received those. You didn't receive an email from. Was that sent from us? I haven't gotten an email from your court system since March. Can you confirm the email that they were sent to to make sure we see if we have the same email address, Angela? Yes, Judge. I have tabu724 at icloud.com. It's tabu724 oh, at uh, aol.com. <laughs> it's at aol, of course. <laughs> Cat lady's got an AOL. That I knew it. I should have known it. <laughs> All right. Can you send that email to that email address at this time, please, Angela? Yes. <laughs> All right. And then, Miss Benson, there's a Cat Fanciers Association Inc. certificate. Yes. Does that pertain to this sister cat? Yes. I can get behind the, the Cat document, Fanciers Association. <laughs> what is that? Registration form of some sort? Yes, her registration with her championship, new championship designation in front of her name. Do you wish to admit this as evidence? Yes, please. All right, Angela, can you forward these other documents to Ms. Burke also, please? I did, thank you. Do you have the ability to access those documents, Ms. Burke? Yes. Okay. <laughs> If you could review those. You know the other email's good, too. She just okay. has three. She, she's she's clever. Three. <laughs> you might check your spam folder. Uh. <laughs> you seen anything yet, Miss Burke? Yes, sir. What would you like for me to look at? If, if you could please review those um, exhibits that Miss Benson's wishing to admit and indicate whether or not you have any objection to the court admitting those. Okay. For one, I don't know who these cats are, what their heritage is, or nothing else. It's a bunch of cats at a cat show. It's a foundation of I don't have any proof that She's this is right even thing. related to this cat. I'll give her that. So where's the lineage on that? Because I don't see it. Uh, Miss Benson, did you take these photographs yourself? That's what an actual the attorney would have. Photographs the cat, cat show, yes. With More each judge and then by herself with her winner's ribbons between each, each ring. And when were the photographs taken? March, uh, shoot. Put on there when the date of the show was somewhere. Look. There was, there was, in a hate. I'll give them this. They both they both are like huge cat fanatics. They do know their cats. This just isn't out of the blue. We've got us a legit controversy. Go and 
back and forth between texts with one another, and I never want to hear it again. The computer doesn't allow me to be seen at the same time, but it was March the 16th, I believe, and 17th on that show. It is in the uh, the notes that I attached with the photos was the date of the show. Of, of what year? Uh, this year. It was just two months ago. All right. Well, I think Ms. Benson's laid the proper foundation for the admission of the photographs. The court will determine what weight um, to give to the exhibits. Wow. Thank you, course. Purple Ghost Dragon. And the other exhibits are a certificate and a registration form. Do you have, did you receive those exhibits, Ms. Burke? Uh, yes, sir. And I also have Zeke's registration and uh, forms from CFA too. So to me, that means nothing. Okay. Do you object to the admission of the exhibits? Oh, no, go right ahead. Okay. So all of respondents' exhibits are admitted at this time. Do you have additional evidence to present, Ms. Benson? No. All right. At this time, I'll give each of you an opportunity to make closing statements or remarks. Ms. Burke, I'll start with you. Okay, I'll put it plain and simple. We went and bought a little cat, cat, and we wanted breeder show quality just for the quality of the cat, not to ever breed it, not to ever show it. We wanted that quality of cat because we have had that quality of cats. I also, too, have raised Egyptian moths. Uh, our old male Egyptian moth never thought about calling me up. Um, and he also has registration papers from CFA. Uh, this kitten is not what it ever uh, was put out to be. Every kitten picture I had of this kitten was in a cage. And I'm not sure if that's not what is part of his personality. Um, when the cat did not um, grow into his qualifications of a show breeder, uh, that's when we started asking some questions from Ms. Benson and we got shut down fast. Um, we taken every avenue that we could to find out what this cat was. Uh, we have figured out that that line is on her mama's side, his mama's side, not on the male side. Uh, and whether that is, uh, the court wants to know that, hear that, and that might be just, um, whimsical as to having a DNA test done. Uh, I think it is pretty sad in the day that a cat owner would want to go this distance to be charged that much and an issue come up and the owner of the cat isn't willing to back it up. She did not bring all four siblings of this cat to the vet's office. She had in her possession the cat that we purchased and a Bengal cat, a, Geoff a Geoffrey, which is another breed cat, that she was going to get on a plane to and fly to uh, New York. Well, small animals decides that she has more than two litters in a year. Miss Vincent doesn't have a license in the state of Kansas to sell cats. Uh, I have just had some questions. I was not being uh, mean or derogatory. I just needed some help with her to find out what was wrong with this cat because he has never acted like any mall that we have raised in 20 years. Uh, my adult male treats me as well as my husband does. He waits for me on the sidewalk when I get home. He comes in with me, and if my husband's off from work, he won't come out till I get home. So just because our cat was allowed to go out and in, that cat still had the respect for the owner not to claw it up. It's a disrespectful it cat. <laughs> uh, that is very abnormal for an Egyptian mom. They attach to one person in the family. And when you have that cat that attaches violently towards a person needs to be put down. We have not put this cat down till we figure out what the court system wants to do with this cat. Because right now, we're not even thinking about, do we want another mall out of Miss Benson to trade out a cat with her? No, sir. She cannot prove our cat's lineage because she has multiple cats lineage. in her own. That was our question, and when she got defensive and did not want to make an act that we felt was incorrect, correct, then okay, uh, we're stuck with this mixed breed cat. That since court will be over today, or in your judgment, we will find a new home for this cat. 
and it's not going to be in my home. This cat is disqualified from CFA. We pay $2,000 for that cat, a kitten. So I, I appreciate you hearing the, some squabble over some cat. I never meant for it to go that far. And I thank you for you. Thank you, Ms. Burke. Ms. Benson? Okay, okay. she showed a little uh, uh, sense there, actually. And effectively, the argument is she overpaid for substandard pussy. There isn't a man alive who, who can't relate. Closing statement? Well, the cat's lineage is known. I mean, she's got the generation, three or four generation pedigree, she said, from CFA. And that is his lineage. That is what's behind him. It's what's in his background. He's from all registered cats as far back as at least six generations. You know, um, as to the fact that he didn't turn out to be the way she wanted him to be, I'm sorry for that, but they grow up and what she, you know, they don't always turn out exactly how you envision they will. That's why I offered her one that was already older, established. If she wanted a stud, he was already, you know, ready to be a stud. If she wanted a pet, he was a very sweet pet and had the look that she thinks is the only look a male has. But I've known from all my experience is showing that there are many looks in the silver Egyptian mouse. They don't all look alike. And one look doesn't necessarily win and another one loses. It just depends on the judge viewing the cat at the time, what their personal preference is, how they read and decipher the standard, read standard. Um, again, I tried to make it right. She did not want to respond to that. She'd made up her mind and I'm sorry about that. I know that I can't make 100% of the people happy 100% of the time. I did maintain my reader's license for over 18 years. I let it expire when I no longer raised four to six litters or more a year. The last year I raised a total of two litters. I didn't renew my license because I only had two litters of kittens. They're not selling. They haven't been selling for the last three years. And that's related to the COVID pandemic. People aren't interested in going out and spending money on cats and dogs. So I came to terms with that and went back to work and you know, lowered my breeding to next to nothing. For that reason, I still have people come back wanting more of my kittens that have bought from me previously. And I've had to tell them I'm not breeding at this time. Last litter of Egyptian mouths I had was, well, they turned 12 months old this month, a that's, year ago. That's a bold because statement. Because nobody's been buying mouths. <laughs> but the one that I put in the photo, she sold as a breeder to another breeder. She sold as part of a breeding pair to another breeder. I mean, we I've been divesting myself with my breeders because they no longer sell and I have to go back to work. I don't have time to take proper care of them being home. But they are cage raised for separation issues because the state requires it. So yes, they were all started in a cage because the state requires they be caged every time they show up and they can show up anytime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. And you have to be available. Your cats have to all be caged. So we do know who the parents are. There's no doubt, no question. And I have not owned a Bengal in 20 years. So there's no way that it had any Bengal in its bloodline because as long as I've been an Egyptian mouth breeder, I've not owned a Bengal, at least not from my lines, unless it's way far back that had nothing to do with me and I knew nothing about. And that is all I have to add to this case. Oh, here we go. So, Ms. Benson, this yes. wisdom panel says 24% Bengal. Suggested. That's what they say, suggested. But they also state clearly in their terms and conditions that they are not to be used as in a court of law to determine parentage. And they state that in two different places in their terms and conditions. All right, thank you, Ms. Benson. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna need a little bit of time to review these exhibits before I issue a ruling. Okay. I don't typically look at the exhibits until they've been admitted. So um, let's take about a 15 to 20 minute recess to let me review these exhibits as well as my notes. Um, you can just mute your camera and um, go off video while we're waiting. Don't leave the meeting. Okay. So we're in recess. Same appearances as before. All right, I've had an opportunity now to review the exhibits of both the petitioner and the respondents, as well as go back over my notes that I'm going to find as follows that the defendant, Ms. Benson, advertised the sale of Egyptian now cats, indicating prices for uh, pets or for a breeder show that she had been doing 
involved in the breeding and showing of Egyptian moths for 20 you, you can thank Natalie. She, she's the one who got it for me. I, I, I haven't seen it, so I, I, I was just playing what I had. Some odd years. The plaintiff, Miss Burke, has also had numerous years um, in owning um, an experience with Egyptian mouths, drove from Alabama to Kansas to pick up the cat. <laughs> Zeke is the cat at issue. Uh, with the intention of um, having a breed or show cat paying the two thousand dollar price tag, <laughs> it's assumed that Miss Burke had an opportunity to review the cat in person at the vet's office in Howard, Kansas, um, before paying the money and transporting the cat back to Alabama. As the cat grew older, Miss Burke. became dissatisfied that the, the cat didn't meet the qualifications to be a show or a, or a breed cat. There's a DNA testing done. Uh, the court has, has reviewed the wisdom panel. However, without having much more scientific background, it's hard to, to gauge the accuracy or how much weight to give, to give that, but I think it does deserve some weight. In essence, uh, Ms. Burke, testified that while they didn't intend to show or breed the cat, they, they wished to have the quality of cat that could be shown or bred. And I've reviewed the photographs of the sister cat submitted by Miss Benson and the photographs of Zeke, and they don't look very much alike in the court's opinion. However, I'm my only knowledge on what's a show quality Egyptian now has come from what I've heard in, in this hearing today. What I'm going to do is award Miss Burke $800, finding that that's the difference in price of a breed or show cat and a pet price of $1,200. I'm gonna order Miss Benson to pay judgment in that amount to Miss Burke. So that's, that's the order of the court. Um, either one of you can appeal this decision if you wish, if you choose to do so. At this stage, it goes from up to the Kansas Court of Appeals. I'll take it to the so Kansas Ms. Court of Burke, Appeals. Do you have any questions about the court's ruling? You're muted. Ms. Burke, you're muted. You'll need to unmute. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I questions? will be appealing to the higher court. Wow. I will pay $2,000 for a mutt cat. And so I will proceed higher. Very well. Ms. Benson, do you Thank have any you questions? so much for your time. Good for you. Go, Karen. Ms. Benson, do you have any questions? You're muted as well. No, sir. Thank you. All right. Angela, do you know? on these small claims appeals, uh, who's responsible for the journal entry, or is that something that the court produces? That I do not know, Judge. All right, well, we'll look into that um, and send you both a copy of an order. Okay, thank you. So. Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you that we were awarded 33 something dollars in small claims. I really do appreciate you offering us a hundred, uh, $800 um, difference of that. Uh, but thank you, but I will appeal on and take it to the <laughs> next higher court and I will luck, let Tracy. the Federal Trade Commission know. So I appreciate you very much. You're very welcome, Miss Bird. Have a good weekend, everyone. <laughs> we'll be in recess. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, good Lord. When there are scary things Sidebar or not, you don't have one of your assistant public defenders say something about my children. Emotions can.
You guys see me? I don't know what happened there. I, I, I couldn't turn it off. Am I back on? I don't even know. <laughs> Am I here? Somebody tell me. I don't even know if this is happening. Oh, sorry about that. I, I clicked the wrong button, apparently, when I was try trying to get that. <laughs> so the judge splits the baby. I get it. I, I would I would have given her zero, but I understand what he was trying to do. He was trying to go in between. He's like, OK, it wasn't quite what you expected. Um, and he was he was it's very typical of judges. They like to they like to give both sides something. Honestly, I I think that that position is legally justified. I, I think it's a reasonable ruling. It's not the one I would have made. I would have said y you had the cat. You got to observe the cat. You had the cat tested. You purchased the cat. You were disappointed with the way it grew. But the, that's, that's you know, there is a warranty that this is a show um, level cat. And you got to see it ahead of time and, and tough nuggets. It's your cat. She, the breeder delivered what uh, an animal that you actually got to view first and you decided to take it and paid the money. That's what I would have done. I understand why the judge did what he did. He kind of wanted to split it in between and end the controversy, but no, 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 she's off. She's off to the Kansas appellate court. If that makes it to the Kansas appellate court, I need, I need that hearing. <laughs> I, I doubt it will. I doubt it will. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. Thank you all for coming out. That was super fun. Sorry. I was naughty. It's a holiday weekend. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And stone cold sober, too. <laughs> I, just, I just can't sit there and have them talk about cats for an hour and behave myself. I'm sorry. That's the way it's going to be. <laughs> oh, and I feel bad for Zeke too, like all you guys. Poor Zeke. I'm not I'm not much of a cat lover, but you know what what did, what did Zeke do to anybody? He was just born, you know? All right. Thanks a lot for coming out. I'll see you all soon. <laughs>